Welcome to the New Money Habits Podcast, where we talk about how to create a better plan for your money so you don't have to live paycheck to paycheck. Here are your hosts, Sarah Jones and Nino Villa. Welcome back, Budgeteers. Coach Nino Villa here, and alongside me, my partner on the airways, as always, it's Sarah Jones. Hey, Sarah. Uh, I know the last time we talked, you said you're going to be in Arizona for a while. So welcome back to Arizona, all that. But still checking in on you and seeing what you're up to. How are things? Yeah. Hey, Nino. Hey, everyone. Things are good. We will be here in Arizona for a while. Um, yeah, things are good. Um, I'll just tell a quick little story, something that happened this morning, just in case, you know, keeping it real with everybody that um, people that think that living in an RV is very glamorous and just so exciting. Um, I, James went to coffee with the guys this morning and I was sitting, getting ready to pick up my book. And I heard this kind of whooshing noise is that's the best way I can describe it. And I was like, huh, I wonder what the heck that was. And then I heard our hot water heater kick on. Not uncommon. But I was like, man, that sounds kind of loud. Wonder what, wonder what's going on. Sat for a second and thinking, this is not normal. Like whatever's happening right now isn't normal. And I walk into my office because the hot water heater is directly outside of my office so I can hear it more. I'm like, that's really loud. Huh. And I hear water. I shouldn't hear water. So I ran outside and ran around, shut the water off at the spigot, opened up the door. And at first I didn't know what happened, but literally water was everywhere pouring out of underneath the camper. And I will tell you, as an RVer, you never want to see that happening. (laughs) Water leaks are terrible to manage, right? And they're just awful. Long story short, it turns out that we, there was, um, a break in one of our water filters on the outside. So nothing internal was damaged. It didn't damage anything. Where the water break happened, it was a fully sealed area. And as we did some more research, those filters are very, it's very common for them. It's a, it's a design defect um, that we've mm-hmm. now realized. Um, so that was my morning, you know, water leaks. So just in case any of you out there are thinking, boy, that sounds really fun. I mean, a water leak in a house is never fun, but in a camper, it's not fun either. so So a little bit of like that 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 hand across the brow like at least it wasn't it it doesn't sound like it's an expensive fix and and it's all managed that is true and really no fix necessary it's just taking that uh filter off it was an extra filter that we have on because as traveling, you know, we have to be really careful about the water that we put into the camper because our lines are sensitive. Right. And so Mm -hmm. it was, it was basically an extra filter that we bought a couple of months ago and we don't even, it's not even a hundred percent necessary. So easy Mm -hmm. fix. Very, very grateful that it wasn't worse, but that's how the morning started out. And I was like, ah, happy Monday. Cause we're recording this on Monday. I was like, man, this is a great Monday morning, but, um, all is well. It turned out just fine. <laughs> Somebody's got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> right. <laughs> Reference from the office space movie. Right. I don't know if I have to like disclose that right to our podcast listeners, like I, trademark, I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> well, I'm glad that it's all under control and uh, I'm glad you were able to get on and record with me today because I think we're going to have a very interesting conversation. I think we're kind of going back to um, the well on a, a particular format that you and I have come uh, to like a little bit. For anybody who's listening, and uh, I think we've we've shared before that sometimes we kind of talk to prepare our conversation for what are are we talking about? What's the topic? And as we do that, before we hit the record button, it's like, well, man, that conversation was really good. And (laughs) I'm so mad that we didn't hit the record button. So now we don't prepare any longer. Not, I mean, we prepare (laughs) some, but this particular format today, Sarah has no idea what's in store for her. I just have a topic of a discussion 
that I think is going to be interesting. And I think once I once I kind of tee you up here in a moment, Sarah, <clears throat> I think it's going to be very easy. I think we can go into a bunch of different directions. So we'll have to try to, you know, kind of uh, corral ourselves because uh, it's a big topic. Um, and I think it's going to it's going to uh, create a lot of interest. <clears throat> but before I do that, don't miss out on the valuable uh, financial insights that you get on the New Money Habits podcast. Subscribe today and unlock a wealth of knowledge to empower your financial journey. Stay up to date with the latest episodes as Sarah and I discuss practical tips, host expert guests, and have thought-provoking discussions on all things money-related. Hit that subscribe button now and join our community of savvy listeners. All right. So the topic of discussion today is generosity. And so I just wanted to talk about the, the the idea of being generous with our money, how do we insert generosity into our money plan? How do we plan to be generous? And so I just kind of wanted to open up the, the lines of uh, discussion here for making genera- yeah, excuse me, generosity a part of the money plan. Hmm. I love this. And I feel like I've had <clears throat> these conversations more and more with, um, with some clients and I want to, I, I, gosh, this is, it's a very big topic. And so, um, one thing that I would say that I just want to start off with saying that I want people to be very intentional with their giving, be very intentional with being generous. Right. And, um, You know, one thing that I go through with clients is they say, well, I'm giving here and I'm giving there. And we really talk about why, right? Because I Mm want to know why it is that they're giving to these certain places, certain, you know, charities to their church, whatever it might be. Because there's a couple of different places that this can come from, right? It can come from a place of, I really want to be generous. This is part of what I believe. I've got the funds to be able to do this. I feel good about it. Or it can come from a place of, I feel like I have to, I am not worthy if I don't, I am told that I, you know, need to. And so I want to get a good feeling of where does this coming from? So then we know, you know, how to put it into our money plan, right? And, and knowing how to put it in your money plan, as you said, it's a big deal. Um, this generally falls because I talk about money a little bit differently. We go in kind of values categories. And so for my clients, I say, where does this kind of fall in your values? You know, how important is this for you? Where is this coming from? Right. And then we look at, is this an essential? Is this a part of your non-negotiables? You know, if it is, Mm. then it goes in that category. Those are place a little bit higher in the priority list for other people. And there's no judgment. It doesn't matter where you put any of these, you know, any categories. Some other people Mm -hmm. like to put it in their creating community or creating impact category. Right. And so it just lets us know where it is in priority. Sometimes, you know, people really want to be able to give they, but as we're going through things, sometimes their budget truthfully, their money plan truthfully doesn't allow them to give the way that they really want to right now. And I want to be really clear when I say this, um, this is a really hard topic for a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And so we talk through a lot of, you know, what's really important right now for you and how can we get to a place if giving, being generous is like the ultimate, you know, I want to be able to give more. Then we look at, okay, what are some steps that we can take now? Um, and I mean, I could go into a, a whole, a whole mountain climbing competition with this, right? Because there's so many different levels, um, to giving and, and to being generous. Um, but most importantly, I want clients to be intentional with it. Um, you know, I will say that my, when I talk to clients and I tell them, you know, we don't just give. We, um, there's a difference between giving and being generous with your money versus 
I'm, I'm going to say this and this might hit some people wrong, but for a lot of years, I'll just use an example. I was asked to give money to family members to help them out. Mm. For years, I was asked to loan money to family because they thought that we had it. And people are like, oh, you're giving, right? Doesn't that feel good? You're giving to help somebody else. That is very different than giving out of a place from your heart and for caring and love and, and um, being really intentional with it, right? So we want to hit some some distinctions with it. I don't give to just give anymore, right? We give to charities that we truly believe in and to organizations that we believe in. And it's a very intentional thing now. So that was a lot of a lot of spewing and a lot of rambling, rambling coming out. Well, I think in fairness to you, one, you didn't know what was coming. And two, like I said, it's a really big topic that could go off in a number of different directions. And so with no preparation, it was, wow, like, let me get my bearings about me. Where do I want to? So I want to recap a couple of things you said, um, because I I, want to really highlight some of the the things that you said that I really uh, agree with. And one of those, you, you just use the word again, and that is intentionality. Everything about your money plan, but beyond your money plan, is are are you intentional? Are you mindful? Are you thinking through? the The second part of that is the why, right? You talked about like why are we doing this? So I'm being intentional, and part of being intentional is I'm thinking through why. What is my motivation? Right then, you also talked about, um, and I knew I was going to lose it for a second there, but intentionality, uh, the why, oh, tying it to your values, right? And so, it, is this a value thing? Is it a non-negotiable? These are these are really important things to consider when being intentional. Then you kind of went in a, a completely different direction, but I think one that is is equally relevant to explore. And that is the idea of um, just because you are giving to somebody else in need, whether that's a family member, somebody, you know, on a street corner through a charitable organization, just because you're giving to somebody in need doesn't necessarily mean you're always doing it for the right reasons. And that goes back to the intentionality and asking yourself why. And if your why is because I've been told I have to, I've been guilted to believe that I must, that, you know, somehow I'm being manipulated. Well, that is a very, very dangerous place to be, whether it's family or otherwise. And I think it's it, it's worth investigating a little bit and, and giving our listeners, you know, at least, um, I don't know, maybe a dissenting voice. Like if, if in their family, they're, they're feeling like they must, and they're being told they have to, to hear somebody tell you, no, you don't. Right? You get to define the word help. And, and I can't take credit for that. That's, uh, Dr. Henry Cloud in the, in the book Boundaries talks about redefining the word help. What does it mean to help a loved one? In financial crisis, I work with many clients who are so thrilled about the results that they've seen with their own financial uh, landscape, their own financial situation, that they're like, Nino, please, I will pay you. Will you please work with so-and-so? And I'm like, nope, I'm sorry. I can't do that. unless." So and so is willing to pay me directly, but I can help you to redefine what help looks like so that you don't feel guilted into paying their way and sending them money and doing all of these other things. So I wanted to just kind of take a moment to say it's very, very relevant and, and valid. Yeah, and I think that, <clears throat> you know, I I don't necessarily want to get in too deep here, but I do have and have had. Um, a lot of clients that have felt 
that is, it is their duty from their church also to give. And they've had a lot of conflicting feelings on that, you know, and, and we've had to really work through like, number one, where are those feelings coming from? Um, you know, why is it important for you? You know, is it important for you? And, and I just want to say that it took me a lot of years to be able to, to see and to recognize that just because somebody was asking me, you know, for help didn't mean I had to say yes. Like you said, it was really setting those boundaries, but I had to understand where the yes or no was coming from, right? I really had to understand why they were asking and what does it, I don't want to say necessarily benefit me, but, but what are my own values and my own feelings towards it? Right? Because no doubt it's helping somebody else. But we can't put ourselves in a position, I don't believe, to help other people more than what we're helping ourselves. And if we're in a really bad situation or we're not in a good place, that helping others isn't necessarily going to be helping us either. And it could be potentially putting us into a worse situation. And so we go through, I go through these conversations pretty deeply with my clients. And and I've got some clients now that that actually um the wife is on one side and the husband's on the other side of, of giving, you know, yes. One thinks it's very mm-hmm. important right now. It's a not, you know, non-negotiable. And the other one's like, no, we have a lot of debt that we need to get taken care of. And I want to be able to get that. So we can then be really intentional with how much we're giving. And so we're navigating that. Um, I'm navigating that right now with some clients and how do we determine then do you give or do you not how much and when, um, within, you know, spouses, within married couples, because we all have such deep feelings towards this, right? And it just, it means so much to us in very different ways. Yeah. You know, um, when you, when you talk about people who attend church and they feel a certain type of way, whether that is, um, there's a big spectrum and on one side of that spectrum it's it's obligation or feeling like i must and on the other side it's just i want to because i've been blessed and i want to be a blessing to others right and there's there's a wide spectrum in between i like to help those individuals remember that scripture tells us that we need to have our own house in order in order to help other people and that there's there's grace and there's mercy there and And there's not um, guilt and condemnation have no place in in our generosity. Um, New Testament scripture tells us that we need to uh, each uh, determine for ourselves how much we give. And and we need to do that with a a cheerful and a joyful uh, spirit and heart. So with that being said, it's like, when we want to be generous and, and generosity doesn't always have to be. So like I asked, how do we kind of plan for generosity in the money plan? Right. So I, I kind of pigeonholed us a little bit just to kind of see if <laughs> we would break that hold. And that is generosity is not always a dollar amount, right? Like right. generosity can be so many other things. You know, we, we can give of our treasure, but we can certainly give of our time and our talent, you know, spending, time with somebody. Um, you know, one of the things those clients who ask me, like, you know, if I pay for it, will you work with so-and-so? Like, why don't you sit down with so-and-so? You've learned all these great new money habits. You have a better uh, handle on your finances. Like, spend some of your time investing into that person. So you're not investing dollars, but you're investing time. And so there's other ways to be generous too, but uh, just a couple of points that I wanted to share. Yeah. And I'm glad that you brought that up because that's something that we talk about a lot, you know, that it doesn't have to be a dollar amount. Your time is invaluable, right? And so if you're, mm-hmm. you're volunteering, you're helping out at places that whether it be you know, kids of schools, you're volunteering at the library, at the daycare center, at, um, you know, the, the shelter, whatever it is, like your time in my beliefs means a a thousand times more, right? It's, it's worth Mm -hmm. a thousand times more than a dollar amount. And so, um, I hate to see people downplaying that, but also not recognizing that it doesn't have to be a dollar amount. You give 
give your time, you're helping somebody in ways that probably go far beyond what you believe they're going, right? And, and it, it just seeps in so deep to generations by giving your time to help others. So um, while you did kind of start off with money, and that's definitely the direction that I went because um, we talk about money here, but generosity comes in a lot of different ways. And um, I will say that, again, I just want to reiterate that it's there's no judgment that if people give you know, and, and whether to charities, they tithe, whatever that might look like, there's no judgment if you choose not to right now either, right? There's no judgment if it's a non-negotiable. There's no judgment if you have been, maybe you've been putting it on a credit card and you realize, listen, that doesn't feel right for me right now. So I need to learn a new Mm -hmm. way to do this. There's no judgment. We just want to get it to a point where it feels right for you and you're doing it for the right reasons and you can feel really good all the way around because if there's a piece of you that's giving that doesn't feel really good then it's not doing its purpose whether that be your time your money your donate whatever it is if there's a piece of you that doesn't feel good about it then we need to work on that because you are not giving um at a hundred percent you're not it's not It's not doing what you believe it's really doing if you have feelings of guilt or frustration or shame or whatever else little things are going on, right? And so that's really what it's about for me is helping you, helping the clients to understand why do I want to give? Where does that giving, you know, and that generosity, what does it look like and what does it mean and how can I, how can I put it into my plan? Yep. Yep. And so I want to just take a few minutes as we kind of wrap up this conversation for those who do decide, hey, this is going to be part of my plan. I just kind of talking about a a couple different strategies for, you know, at at a high level, it's really easy, right? If if you're giving to the American Red Cross or to the the local animal shelter, and you just kind of have it as a a line item on your budget, like that's easy, right? If if you're tithing a tenth to the church and it's just not you know, a line item on your budget, but I want to talk about um, maybe a, a strategy for um, spontaneous generosity, generosity where it's not uh, necessarily um, kind of a reoccurring contribution or something like that, and so. Um, at the at the risk of sounding boastful, because that is not the point, um, my wife and I have a separate account that's that we put money into specifically to be generous, so that when opportunity presents itself, you know whether that's helping out a loved one in in a financial hardship for the right reasons, or it's um, you know, we're recording this around the holiday time, right? And so whether it's uh, adopting a, a family at Christmas time for uh, that purpose or, or whatever it might be, but being able to kind of plan uh, some some spon- spontaneous generosity into the overall plan uh, is, is just something that's really, really cool. And it's one of those things that when um, clients share that this is a value of theirs and that you know they want to find ways to be generous, but they don't know necessarily how to go about uh, vetting different nonprofit organizations or whatever. It's like, well, here's another strategy you could use that allows you to be generous in ways that are incredibly meaningful to you. Mm, I love that. Um, you know, we used to just make it part of our like holiday budget, you know, our Christmas budget and everything. So what we were going to spend at the holidays, we would add in or make it part of um, when the kids were in school, you know, we had what they had, like the, they called it like the angel tree at school, you know, for families in the area mm-hmm. that were mm-hmm. in need of certain things. And so we always liked to go in and that was just part of our holiday spending. You know, we knew how much we were going to spend and that was that included to be able to grab some of the stars off the tree and to be able to provide those items for those families. Um, and, and so that's the way that, you know, we did some of that as well. So it wasn't necessarily, we didn't have a, a, a certain dollar amount. Like you said, it was just, we put it into our holiday um, budget, knowing that we've got this money in there that is available for us to do. Um, however, we saw, fit, you know, at the time. And for a lot of years, it was the the angel tree at the school. 
Um, and, you know, and I, I love that, Nino. And I think that, um, you know, knowing because we're recording this at the, at the holidays, you don't have to do it, but you know, there are a lot of like even toy drives and, and different types of drives this time of year. And so if you would like to add that in, you know, starting next year, you can start in January or February, right? Whenever you're listening to this and you can be contributing yep. a few dollars, right? To this fund, knowing, <clears throat> you know what? There's going to be some some drives come the end of the year to provide Thanksgiving meals for families, to provide coats for toys, whatever it might be, right? Um, there, It's never too early, right? To start saving and start doing things, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit differently next year, right? And, and I... I'm a list maker, so I like to make lists of things that I want to do next year, you know, that I learned new this year. You know, like, hey, I didn't have an opportunity to participate this year, but this is something they definitely want to do next year, so I'm going to write it down. That way, when I'm planning ahead, I make sure that that is included. I'm a big planner myself, right? That's that's what we talk about <laughs> is having a plan and, and mm -hmm. following it. Um, one other thing that kind of came to mind that I, I want to share with our listeners, when you're thinking about um, being generous and, and giving to an organization, uh, we kind of scratched at it a little bit earlier, but I just want to kind of reinforce the point that um, do your due diligence and, and really um, kind of vet the organizations that um, you want to contribute money to uh for instance we talked about like generosity being part of your value system right so my value system says hey our community is important right like you first take care of your household then you kind of move out to the community and then you start to expand your reach outward right if uh it it, it doesn't make sense it, it almost goes back to that same idea that if my house and my community are not in order, then what business do I have going to the ends of the earth trying to help? If mm -hmm. if there's if help is needed right in our own backyard. So anyway, that was a long intro, long-winded intro into there's a food bank in uh the area nearby that um is very transparent in the in in their finances and we know that like I don't know the exact percentage, so I'm going to make this part up, but it's like 90%, 90 cents of every dollar goes to those in need, right? So only like 10% of it are for administrative costs or whatever. But what I also know is for every $1 donated to this food bank, it provides seven meals to a family. That is an incredible ratio if you think about it, right? If you mean if I donate ten dollars, I just provided seventy meals to families? Like that's incredible. And so, vetting and, and, and getting to know the organizations that you know you want to trust, um, because I, I do believe that when we pool resources together, then those resources can do much greater things than they can if they were just individually separated. Um, and so vet those organizations and, and then pool your money with those that you trust are doing the things uh, that align with your value system. Yeah, for sure. And, and um, you know, I think we started for um, many years ago um, when my son was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, we learned of a couple of organizations that help specifically with that. Well, that was never on our radar before. Right. But now something came mm. into our life and it gave us an opportunity. Um, I volunteered hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours, right, to this organization. And also um, we gave money as well because it, it, it was very close to us. And so I think that I, I think my point in this is saying that along those lines of vetting, Nino. You know, really look at what's really important for you too, right? And look at maybe what's come into your life. And with that diagnosis with my son, our life literally changed. And that organization was a bridge to life we knew before and to a new life that we were 
we had to learn, right? And so I think that there's a lot of ways to be generous because then you can then, I was able then to help new newly diagnosed families, right? To go through that grieving process and learn to live a different life going forward. And there's so many great things that you can just take and to see what you're really passionate about. Um, and I think this goes along with, you know, your house and your community, because that came, that became a piece of our community, right? Because that was a new mm-hmm. piece. That was a new community that we were in. And so I think we could take it very literal where we live, mm-hmm. but also look yep. at, right? What other communities are you a part of that, that you really believe in that have helped you out that you can maybe give back to as well. And, and, um, I think that, um, Again, I don't want to downplay your time. You know, money is is a piece of it, but your time extremely important. Um, and uh, I'm going to throw this one last thing out, and then then that'll be my my rant. Um, I'll be done spewing information, but I also want to say that just if you can give one dollar a month, that is being generous. And if you can give $1,000 a month, that is also being generous. That the amount of money that you give has no bearing on the amount of generosity that you are giving, right? It is all the same. That energy is all the same. You are giving and it does not matter. You are not better. Somebody is not better because they're giving more money. That has no bearing on it. So if it's $1 or if it's 1000 the energy is all the same. And... um. I just, I want to put that out there because I know there are people like, oh, I can only give a dollar. Well, gosh darn, then give it proudly, right? It's not only a dollar. It's you are giving a dollar of your hard earned money and that means something. So don't downplay it. Yep. When you give it cheerfully, it it does not matter. Doesn't Mm -hmm. matter. All right. Well, this has been a great conversation uh, for our listeners. If you're ready to take your financial growth to the next level, schedule your free conversation with Sarah or myself today. And during your personalized session, we'll discuss your specific financial goals. We'll gain clarity on your challenges and explore how working with a financial coach can accelerate your progress. Don't miss out on this valuable opportunity. Book your free discovery call now and create the new money habits needed to achieve financial freedom. Like I said, great conversation and uh, we'll continue ours next time. Thank you for listening to the New Money Habits podcast brought to you by New Money Habits and Keeping Up with the Joneses Financial Coaching. Submit your questions to our host by emailing podcast at newmoneyhabits.com. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of future episodes. Join our growing group of like-minded people on Facebook and follow us on your favorite platform. Music provided by Summer School.